key steps, nasopharyngoscopy, application of decongestant and inspection of nares, topical anesthesia application, insertion into nasopharynx, inspection of larynx, withdrawal of scope. The nasopharyngoscope allows the physician to visualize the upper airway precisely in patients who have upper airway complaints. Hold the scope as shown. The dial on the underside of the scope allows for upward and downward movement of the tip of the scope. This up and down movement, combined with rotation of the scope, allows for 360 degree viewing of the airway. Apply a topical decongestant to allow the nasal passages to decongest and open. Inspect the nares to determine which side of the nose is the most patent to pass the nasopharyngoscope through for the examination. Use the tripod technique to hold the nasopharyngoscope on the face while inserting into the nares to add stability and avoid any undue trauma. The area marked by the arrow is the nasal passage along the floor of the nose where the scope should be passed to enter the nasopharynx. To prepare for the scope insertion, spray the nares with a decongestant solution. Then anesthetize the throat with a topical anesthetic, followed by application of the anesthetic into the selected side of the nose for scope passage. First, spray the anterior aspect of the nares, then insert the spray tip perpendicular to the plane of the face along the floor of the nose. As the patient holds their breath, apply the anesthetic to the deep aspect of the nose as the tip is withdrawn. Carefully advance the nasopharyngoscope along the floor of the nasal passage below the inferior turbinate. The initial structures encountered once the nasal passages are traversed are the palatine tonsils. Rotation of the tip of the scope with flexion laterally to approximately 90 degrees allows visualization of the eustachian tube openings and Rosenmuller's fossa. After inspection of these surfaces, advance the scope down into the oropharynx. Inspect the key structures of the oropharynx, including the base of the tongue, the vallecula, and the posterior aspect of the tonsils. Having a patient extend their tongue out of their mouth allows one to visualize the vallecula. After inspecting the oropharynx, carefully advance the scope into the hypopharynx, where one visualizes the laryngeal structures and vocal cords. Here, inspect the true cords and false cords and the overlying soft tissue of the laryngeal cartilage. Also inspect the piriform sinuses on either side of the larynx. The vocal cord movement and symmetry are important to document. At this point, asking the patient to say ah and e allows the clinician to document cord function. Avoid touching structures of the hypopharynx with the scope since this can induce laryngospasm. One can see clearly the movement of the arytenoid cartilage as the vocal cords are contracted in this example. Upon finishing the complete inspection, withdraw the scope in neutral position. This completes the examination.